I typed in the program as well. And one thing I should remind you to do, and this is easy to forget, make sure to save the file after you've typed it in. Uh, it's easy to just type in something and go on doing other things and forget that you hadn't saved it just yet. I'd like to talk through the file line by line and give you a feel for what you just typed in. Well, first thing, package examples. A package corresponds to a directory. That's why we put the code under the examples directory. We're going to see later on that we can use packages to group together similar code. Next line, public class hello. Um, the rule in Java is whatever you name your class, that needs to be the same name as you name your file. So we have a hello.java and a class hello. It is case sensitive, so capital H hello and capital H hello.java. And in Java, all the code we write goes into classes. In this case, it's a public class, meaning anybody can access it. And we'll see more about that later. And the class has one, what we call a method. A method is where the work gets done in your program. The method is called main. In Java, we need at least one method called main to be the, the bootstrap, the, the starting point of all of our code in our program. Main always looks like what we have here, public, static, void, main, string, bracket, bracket, args. You can pass arguments to the main, and we'll see how to do that in another page here. Uh, but whether you use those arguments or not, you always have to declare the main as needing that string bracket bracket args. And so I guess the idea here is that the first few lines of this uh, are going to be pretty similar uh, when later on when you do, for example, your exercises. You'll have a package, you'll have a class with a name, you'll have a main. Uh, but then what goes on inside the main, well, that, that varies depending upon what you're trying to do. In this case, the first line in the main does a printout. So it prints to standard output. In a while, we're going to see that's just going to be to our console window. It'll print out the word hello with a comma and a space afterwards. It then, we then encounter an if statement. We're checking the array called args. We're checking its length. So args has this special length attribute to it. And you can access it using a period or a dot, args.length. So if the length of the arguments is 0, so if they didn't pass us anything in, we'll go ahead and print out the word world immediately after we'd previously printed hello. Notice the use of the double equal sign. In Java, we use two equal signs for comparisons and one equal sign for assignments. Here we're doing a comparison. We're asking, does, uh, are the command line arguments, are they equal to 0, or are the length of them equal to 0? Do we have no command line arguments? If, however, we do have some command line arguments, if it's not 0, the else would be invoked. And in this case, there's just one line of code. It would go grab whatever's at element 0, the first argument, and print it out, followed by an exclamation point. So in Java, all of our arrays are indexed from 0, and we use square braces to index into them. Also, an exclamation point is, uh, is appended, is concatenated. And that's where that plus sign comes in. We use a plus when working with uh, this output string to concatenate two pieces of data together. We have our closed curly brace next. And that matches the open curly brace for the main. And another closed curly brace that matches the open curly brace for, for the hello statement. Well, as you look at this code, you might have some questions. And we teach these classes a lot uh, with this material. And uh, teach, we've taught well, thousands of people Java, actually, if we add it all up. And so there are some typical questions that come up right here. Well, the first one is, what is the difference between print and print ln? And I'd have no reason to. Uh, expect you to know that already, <laughs> which is bad you type this in, right? Well, print prints out whatever's in the parentheses, whereas println prints whatever's in the parentheses, but it adds an extra new line character. Actually, the appropriate new line character or characters for the operating system you're running on. So in the case of our example here, if we didn't pass any arguments, it'd print hello followed by world, and then there'd be a new line afterwards. So hello and world would be on the same line. Another question that comes up sometimes is, where do we put semicolons? When do we use semicolons? Well, in Java, we use a semicolon as a statement terminator. 
At the end of a statement, we put a semicolon. Well, that looks good and fine with the package declaration, but it doesn't apply to the class, right? We have public class, hello, open curly brace. Well, one of the things to remember in Java is that if you have a line of code that has an open curly brace immediately after it, then it would not have a semicolon. So for example, hello and also main, those don't have semicolons after them because they have an open curly brace. They're starting a block of code, as we say. The printout does. How about this next line, this if statement? That doesn't have a semicolon. Well, as it turns out, the if statements optionally can have the curly braces applied to them. And same is true of the else. The rule in Java is that if you only have a single line of code associated with an if or an else, then the curly braces are optional. But if you're going to have multiple lines, you have to put them in to indicate where the if begins and where it ends. There's no end if in Java. Notice there's not even a word then in Java. We use the curly braces to indicate beginning and ends. Um, I personally always put those curly braces in for my if statements, even if it's just the one line just because it makes it easier for me to read. Speaking of easier to read, another question that sometimes comes up has to do with the curly braces. People sometimes ask if they're allowed to move their curly braces to the next line of code, their open curly brace. So I'll go ahead and kind of make that happen here in my code. I'm just moving my uh, open curly brace and lining them up with the closed curly brace down below. Is that legal? Absolutely, yes, it is. And as somebody who's learning Java, uh, it may be worthwhile to write your code this way with your curly braces lining up nicely and showing where the indentation uh, should begin and where it should end. Um, in books, you will typically see them written much like our example where the curly brace is open curly braces on the same line as the line of code uh, that it's related to. And that's mostly because books are trying to conserve vertical space. In your code, you can decide to do it whichever way you want. Next line or same line, how you want to deal with curly braces, curly braces is up to you. However, if you are working in a bigger group, if you're working with other programmers, it may be worthwhile to talk to them and see where they put their curly braces and maybe just come up with some convention to use yourselves. Okay, so we've got ourselves a little program here that prints out the word hello followed by either world or perhaps the first command line argument, depending upon what was passed in. We need to talk about how we could run this program. So that's what we're going to do next.